Arkham Knight, me and Mojo saw the cinematics for it. Fucking bad fucking ass, man. Like, seriously, bro. Um, <laughs> what else can I say about it? Like, okay, so it goes on with Batman and the Scarecrow and then Joker. Those are the three main people. I mean, like, Catwoman and, um, Poison Ivy make appearances, too, along with the other Bat crew. But, uh, All right, we're entering the realm of spoiler talk. Cause I already did my spoiler-free review of Batman Arkham Knight. Have I ever done a spoiler talk for a video game? I don't know that I have. Sure, it's happened somewhere else, but it's not that common. But this one requires it. And that's a fair spoiler warning right there. If you have not played Batman Arkham Knight, this is full of spoilers. I have done my part by warning you. Joker's condition, I guess, is like a blood disease. It's like an STD or some shit. So these people who have had Joker blood transfusions, they're going nuts. And Bruce Wayne is one of them. But it's such a great concept, and here's why because he will show up to randomly talk shit how the Joker would for the situation. But when we've seen that before, it's Joker talking shit per the situation and the Joker's perspective. Yeah, he'll have commentary on what Batman's doing, but it's not in Batman's mind. This time, the Joker is talking shit per what Bruce Wayne and Batman know. So it's the kind of shit talk Joker would do given the information in Batman's head that's awesome. It made for some great moments, great surprises, great commentary by one of my favorite characters, if not my favorite character of all time. So jumping right into the Arkham Knight, the whole thing is like, what's his identity? See, I was convinced for a large section of this game that it was Damian Wayne. Everything added up. The Arkham Knight was talking about how Batman was responsible for the death of his family. And it concentrated a lot about Talia al Ghul and how Batman failed Talia al Ghul. Even Joker in his mind came up to talk about how he shot Talia al Ghul and Batman failed her. So it's like, it makes sense. Damian Wayne is Talia al Ghul's son. And then they start showing death in the family. And the Jason Todd Robin being tortured by Joker. Another thing that's great for Batman to have the Joker in his head. Because at that point, you can show things like this story. And I just like seeing it in action. However, when they were doing it, I was like, oh, okay, so that's the Arkham Knight. Right when they showed that Joker recorded it and sent Batman the tape, I was like, okay, the rule, Batman. What's the rule in cinema? If it doesn't show him die, they ain't dead. So at that point, it was so painfully obvious that Jason Todd was the Arkham Knight that it was not a surprise to me. I was like, I know exactly who you are, dude. It's just easy to deconstruct that shit. The end of the game, Batman gets unmasked. The Scarecrow is filming him. Jim Gordon pulls the mask off. It's Bruce Wayne. Everyone knows it. But from there, it goes from the Joker being completely liberated to like Batman statues are coming out of nowhere and you're the Joker and you're killing him off. And then from there, it goes to him being locked away. It just does it so well and so seamlessly. I totally believe the Joker took over. Batman fought him, locked him away in his subconscious, Batman wins. And after that, he's not afraid anymore. Takes down the Scarecrow, done. That's right, no boss fight.